Hey guys, welcome to this is the first video for Cisco ACI understanding this basic physical connectivity and design and how traffic flow is going to go from spine to leaf, leaf to spine. So this tutorial people who have no clue or you have you never worked ACI before and if you have to configure out of box in first time how you're going to connect and how you're going to configure and this is a video for them. So my left side and right here I have a three epic. What is it? What does it do? Epic. Epic is a management server. So this is will be our GUI. So from GUI we're gonna configure or manage this leaf and spine switches. So the left side, if you guys see, like one, two, three, Epic server. That's the Cisco recommended one, but is not required they have to have three but the more epic you have it the more redundancy you have in case one goes down and goes down you have a one available so each epic over here i have i paired as 20 to 69 20 to 70 20 to 71 so this epic in order to configure right so there's a couple of requirements so i'm going to share with you like one screenshot when you like configure out of box and what this requirement and I'm going to explain to you what is this right here so when this epic first time you boot up so this epic you can install in Cisco UCS box if you don't know what is this here this is a Cisco server blade or it could be you can install if it's a supported by VMware so when first time boot so you have to enter this one the fabric name which is like ACI name so this can you can name whatever you want but those are like example so you can name based on your company requirement so first thing you have to know you have to like the fabric name then you once you type this name you hit enter then it goes like how many controller so since you have a three controller that's why it's three over here and then enter the controller ID so since this is the first controller, that's the number one. If it's the second controller, that ID number will be two. If it's the third controller, that ID number will be three. And then the next one is to enter the controller name. So this is the HQ since AP-1, this is first. Since this is the first controller, that's why one. The name goes like alphabetically. If you organize with numeric value like one, two, three, that's the way it goes. But your fabric name this is unique if you configure self second box you cannot change this hq fabric one that has to be universal the next thing the enter address pool for tab is called tunnel endpoint or bxlen and tender 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 16 this is the comes from out of box from one c power off but if you have your own subnet cisco recommend use one so one thing remember this is also called infrastructure VLAN once you configure that one it cannot change this VLAN the reason is called infrastructure VLAN or I could say infrastructure subnet because this is the IP address that the fabric is going to use to communicate with the fabric zone so let's say you have a uh, 500 leaf switch so each switch will get one IP address. And that's the way leaf and spine, they will not change back at based on this IP address. So be careful when you do that. And also it cannot overlap your layer to IP address with this infrastructure IP. And then last, then once you enter IP address, is then it's enter VLAN ID for infra network. This VLAN, you can choose whatever VLAN. So here, 3967, it doesn't have to be, you can choose 12. So this VLAN, when you configure second controller, you have to enter same VLAN number. If, if this VLAN number and also this HQ fabric, this name and also what else? This doesn't match, so it's not gonna sync. The, the three of the epic, they're not gonna sync each other. So this name has to be unique. Then after that BD multicast, this is the default, you don't have to type, just come with it. BD means bridge domain, which is like layer two. I'm gonna explain to you in the next video. And then you have to choose out of band management. 
don't choose like same IP address. So once I go to the GUI one, I will show you like how I can change this out of box management IP address in the GUI, GUI side. But right now, you can choose whatever you routed IP address. That has to be layer three. And then APIC need to get default gateway. So 192.168.10.254. And it says auto then it's gonna ask you like username, password. You're gonna choose whatever username, password you want. And second screenshot, let's see what I have. So let's say you choose password, sorry, username, password, then there's a warning message. The tap address pool and infra billion ID multicus address pool cannot be changed, which has mentioned earlier. So once you configure, it cannot change it. And this is the like basic, this is the like up to here. This is like small step to configure each epic. So if you have a second one, follow third one, follow the same process. So once you do the management IP address, so it's gonna show over here in GUI something. So this is the GUI I'm gonna provide admin, then password login, incorrect username. So this is the dashboard. So if you want to trace up in the dashboard, so let me zoom in, you could see better. So I think it's much better. If you see over the warning message, your cluster contain less than three service controller. This means once you configure your first controller and you log in by a management IP address, you will see like this red error. So this is nothing because the controller is selling his a team by himself. So then if you wanted to see like one C configure second and third controller, if you wanted to see, so you can click over here, you see the controller, just click in controller. Then you see like drop down menu, it says epic node one, because we configured so far one. That's what's why if you have a like second and third is gonna show up over here and also the graphical representation will be show over here. So then this is a controller policy. This is the basic one. So now the big question is if I go back to the diagram, how this controller is gonna recognize this is the spine and this is the leaf. As soon as you have this layer, as soon as you have this physical connectivity, controller is gonna find this leaf switch automatically. You don't have to do anything. So once once they find, once they synchronize, you're gonna see dashboard something like that. If I go my dashboard. So if you go dashboard, in dashboard, like after system tenant, or if you click in fabric, if you click in like fabric membership, and you will see there's a two, three leaf switches. 101, 102, 103. And if you see like under topology, that should be everything and the topology that my configuration screenshot I show you like is called the fabric name or something else right but if you see this called pod dash one it doesn't match with the PDF file and screenshot that I have this is just like example because I don't have this real lab so once you click in pod over here there's a drop down menu is gonna tell you like how many spine switch has it. There's a spine 201 and there's a two leaf switches. So now since this is discovered, how are you gonna like change the username, the password, the management IP? Because you wanted to SSH this guy. You want to SSH this guy. How are you gonna change their username password in this epic? So let me show you where you can find it. So I'm gonna find it this to change this management IP address for this lip switches right here because these switches needed out of band management. Think like it like this out of band management, like that infrastructure bill and that have it. This is for communication between a peak and also leave for out of band management think like like hp ilo server dell rex or something like that or we have a tsm so for worst case scenario if you wanted to ssh or telnet to the device 
to give IP address to this lib switches once this once this controller discovered them. So we have to go over here. I'm gonna go tenant. I'm gonna go management, and you're gonna choose over here. It's gonna note management address. Click this drop down menu and choose your lib switches. You see one, two. The lib switches are listed here. Just double click. So once you choose, and this is the right here. So once more, so double click it. EG, more about that later. So once you're here, just choose static node management address and click action. And you see the create static node management address. So click over here and you have to choose the node range. So let's say our case I'm going to choose 101. For example, 101 and choose the config out of band management. There's a drop down menu. So this is the ETG like in pro and grouping. So if you have like 100, 200 leaf switches, but you don't want to configure management IP address one by one, one by one, you can create a container or group. So this is the later section. So then assign IP address, for example, 10 dot ten dot ten submit mass and gateway. And once you're down there, just click in submit. So I'm gonna choose 255, 255, 255, 0, let's say for gateway 10.10.1. Once you do that, it's gonna be submit. So right now this error message showing because I haven't chosen any one, just choose default is gonna go away and then click submit. And this is the way you can assign each lib switch out of band management IP address. So now question is then how come this APIC they find out these two lib switches? That's the two protocol is Cisco CDP and LLDP is enabled. And that's the way they figured out. So now this is the like basic part. Now question is, if you have to go like, why are you gonna connect your internet router, your WAN router? So if this is a scenario, where are you gonna connect it? So this diagram is gonna explain it more. So if you have a like, if you want to go to internet, you have to connect your, it's called Cisco core L3 out. So L3 out means it's like outside of fabric, ACI fabric. That's the call L3 out. So L3 out means you're gonna connect your router to the leaf switches. So for example, let's say for this is the internet example. So from over here to leaf switches, you have to have another BRF configuration. So that means it's par BRF, BGP is gonna run between leaf and whatever service provider and then our internal fabric you're gonna learn m bgp so multi-protocol bgp so now let's say for example and this is the subnet 20 20 20 and he wants to talk to over here so this guy is gonna redistribute to the leaf right so then this control this epic over here the spine the spine switches is going to work as a BGP route reflector. So I don't, I'm not going to explain to you over here BGP route reflector. I hope you guys know. So when this subnet is going to redistribute to the ACI fabric, so this route reflector is going to redistribute over here, the BRF one. And this is the subnet because route reflector knows where to follow traffic in BGP. So this is the L3 out, just remember this call L3 out. There's a policy also you have to configure. But after L L3 out, but then where is the wine connection goes? You're gonna connect your wine connection. Where are you gonna connect to? Let's say this is a data center. Now you have another office over here. You need a wine connection. This is for internet. Where are you gonna divide where are you gonna connect your device? You're gonna connect in leave or where are you gonna connect? And one connection is like a little bit weird in Cisco design. So you're not gonna connect it to the leaf switches. So one connection goes Cisco spine switches right here. 
there is a like dedicated line point to point connection so this is cloud this is cloud so what cisco plan is right now if you have another data center cisco 7k and 9k is supported but cisco say 1k asr 1000 on the way so probably the feature model if you have asa 1000 1 asr 1001 or 2000 series in near future you just have to update your uh, software so as soon as you update your software you're good to go you don't have to buy as extra ac card or extra, extra NIC card so now the question is then why are you gonna connect your l3 device to the leaf switches and your wind router to the cisco spine that's the good question i think so reason is because cisco spine is a like pink as a layer 3 device it has a, all the routing table but the leaf switches they don't have any routing table so if you have a wine connection is coming over here so it has a like all the like think of the like vss 6500 so 6500 all the route so thing like it, this ap right now the vss but what are you gonna run which protocol are you gonna run that's cisco say you can run ibgp and also ebgp but there's a couple of technique they use the technique is the technique they use over here is called BGP eBPN. So BGP, sorry, BGP eBPN. So this eBPN is seems like pretty new feature because it's run, it goes with VXLAN. So VXLAN, and this is another tunneling, te tunneling technique that you can use in between your one connection. So this is the basic overview, but there's a lot in ACI to learn. This is like basic overview of like how how you're gonna configure in first time and how you're gonna make your connectivity. And this is the one epic controller again uh, dashboard. So if you go like system, those are like those are like basic. There's you don't need an explanation to understand that one. So there's a tenant, there's a fabric, and there's a VM networking. So if you have a VMware uh, ESXi, you need to hook up your server. That's the VMware networking, Microsoft OpenStack. And this is a L4 to L7. This is I'm gonna cover up with another video in details. Like if you have a load balancing, right? If you have a load balance, like Citrix, F5, if you have a Cisco, ALC firewall, so this is come handy like L4 to L7 service. And admin and operational, this is like, if you click this icon, it's like self-explanation. And after admin and left side, you have a AAA. This is like general networking and nothing new. So most of the time, all the like, if you're like APIC admin, the most of the time you have to spend over here, all the policy. You have to go part. People like access policy and fabric policy, which is I'm gonna configure next couple of video. And there's a lot of policy. Remember that I mentioned also L3 out, and this is the L3 out external breach domain they call. So there is a policy for routed domain, and this is for layer three domain. So this is it all about for understanding basic connectivity and Cisco API design.